Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, back with the Commodore 1084S. Yes, yeah, so I'll post the links down below to the previous uh, parts uh, in the series of this actually, you know, the repair, modification to it, and then later some of the little things I did to it as well as a part of a, an arcade PCB, I think it was when I was looking at the Punisher. Uh, you can see I got a replacement door, 3D printed, so yeah, there's a colour difference here. You could always, if that's bothering you, I mean, I, you know, if it's bothering me, I could retro bright the front here, or even sun bright it, take it out on a sunny day, uh, and it should even the colour of that out then maybe just see what colour this is and consider painting it but uh, anyway yeah the issue is the power switch on the back part one of the repair this one of the first things they did in part one was replace the power switch now at the time I got the one from Future was 8 but I think and uh, I no disrespect to the parts and things that he's got in stock they're probably old stock because you can't get well th this is a new one generally you can't get replacement new switches for these but this is a new one but it's come from China so it's, you know, it's a, a clone how long it lasts I don't know but I would estimate this has uh, been powered off and on less than a hundred times and then uh, you know I moved into this new environment on the desks here used it I don't know three or four times came to the fifth or sixth day switched it on hang on a minute the switch is not latching and what happens is you push it in and it just goes straight back out yeah, it doesn't latch like that. And if you saw part one, I'll perhaps put a clip up here. Um, this little plastic notch on the inside, and they just break off. It's a stupid design, really. So ultimately, no matter where you source your switch from, they're going to fail again. And because of that, I bought some more. Actually, I'm going to sell two of these to friends at cost and keep one as a spare. Because I've got every expectation a year or two from now, you just watch from regular usage, I'll need to swap it again. I can see it coming. Ultimately, what I may do is fit something different because the, you know this type of latchable switch with that tiny little notch on the inside is it's always just going to keep breaking it was almost designed to fail i think anyway without further ado i'll keep this short and sweet i need to unscrew this uh, d uh, connector at the back here you know diesel uh, i started screwing it in because you kept falling out all the time it's driving me nuts yeah so what i like about this is it's a stereo you know, it supports uh, composite, RGB, TTL, etc. And you can see what I had to do. <laughs> Actually, I'd resorted to just unplugging, unplugging the mains lead in to power it on. I just wedged a piece of plastic in there like that. But if I press this, it makes the click, but it's not latching. It should stay in like that. And it isn't doing. It's hard to believe, really. So few uses, and then it's broken again. Anyway, there's going to be uh, two screws uh, up here. If you've never worked on anything like this before, well, just take this as educational. You could kill yourself working on a monster if you don't know what you're doing. You know, the tube will hold 20-odd uh, kilovolts. Uh, less if it's a black and white one, like, I don't know, 10 to 12 kilovolts, but it's, you know, high voltage IDC. You only need a wee bit of that to go through your heart and you're dead. Um, so, yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, don't work on monitors. But... If you're safe and you don't touch anything, and you accept the risks, well, that's up to you. So when you put it on a surface, just do make sure there's nothing to scratch the glass. So there are a few uh, screws midway here. I'm not going to need to pull the board out because the power supply, you know, the power switch is, you know, exposed enough on the end there, I think. And I almost forgot, actually, there's a couple of screws on the back here as well. Let's uh, support it out of the back. I've been really looking forward to being able to use this again. I mean, alright, I had that mains cable, you know, I had the switch to jam dead and then I could just plug the mains cable in. But for that reason, I've just been not using it. I'm like, oh, I can't bother trying to reach for the mains cable and stick the mains cable in to power it on. It's just so much easier when you can switch it off and on. Right, that's the last of, I think, the eight screws. Need to get in this one. It's a D1. This 1084S D1. So at this stage now, I am going to carefully just lift. Be careful not to drop this because if you drop it onto the neck, you will break the tube. Yeah, you can see the audio connectors there. I will stick the one nearest this side to that, and the one furthest away to that one. That might not be correct actually in terms of left right. I think it is though. And we'll move that out of the way. Yeah, we've got easy access to the power uh, switch there. So uh, I'm just going to work on it like that, actually, I think. Let's switch the iron on. See if we can pull the cap off. Will it pull off at the stage? No, it won't. Yeah, it's one of these where you've got to, you know, desolder it and pull it out at an angle. 
Uh, now I'm hoping this switch is going to fit. Are the contacts in the right places? Yes, I think they are. Yeah, if you look at these. If you look at the alignment here, you've got that and then steps inwards, that steps inwards slightly. Not as much as that one there. This thing here, uh, the one that's on there is the same as this actually, where it had these extra contacts. What I did with these is, it's just an extra switch, maybe for a, a power LED or for the degauss or something. And I just, uh, I think I folded them right over like that. And then put a piece of captain tape over there. The reason I did that at the time, which is a bit crazy in retrospect, but you know what? I'm always trying to think ahead. And it was this switch will work in another monitor. Let's say this monitor fails and the power switch works, and you're like, oh, I wish I had one of those switches that had that extra set of contacts there. I could take it out and use it. So even though we're never probably ever going to use it, just like we have on here, and this one is now for the bin, it just makes sense to protect that because then it could be useful somewhere at some point. Because I'm going to be soldering here, I'm just going to literally stuff something here right into this cavity below where the board is sat. Just on the off chance a particle solder falls there, I want to go right down and streak on the inside of this board further down here. So yeah, this is a, a wee bit bodgy. I'm in a rush doing this. It, it should be a simple repair, hopefully done within a few minutes. Yeah, that other switch has got contacts there, this doesn't. <sighs> Having said that, we might be able to reuse this bracket here, so let's let's just see. Let's just desolder it anyway. We're gonna to need to do that, I think, to get it out. I think that'll do. It's just uh wobble a little bit. There. Yeah, those bottom contents are free. These ones at the top, not so much actually. The problem here is obviously, well, it's really hard to, there we go, work on the angle. Right, I'm gonna tilt it down now. And then we can try and get this out. So it's restricted by these wires here. I think, well, let's try and just pull it out the cap. I don't know if I can. There we go. Out. Yeah, so this metal thing here, I might be able to remove that and fit that onto this one. Yeah, I think we will. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if that's something I did with the original one. I honestly can't remember. But, uh, yeah, look, it's not latching. So let me try and get that off. Yeah, I just gripped it with the mole grips here and pulled it. So yeah, it's a little bit bent there. I'm just trying to straighten out somewhat. Oh, hang on a minute, that bit clips off. That's all making sense now. This will go on. Now, one problem we do have, well, another problem we do have, <laughs> there's lots of problems here. Look at this, we've got thin pins, thick pins. So yeah, I'm gonna have to trim, I think, and you know, squish them, squish them together is a better idea um, to get uh, it to uh, go through the board sufficiently. Well, actually, if I bend these things outwards here, I think we can, yeah, we can slide it onto that lock. It's pretty malleable at the end. So yeah, with some effort, I think I'm going to be able to slide that on. Right, really annoying, but you can see actually, it's not just about the uh, pins there versus the spade sort of things, but the, the short, the short, these aren't going to stand up high enough because look at this here. Yeah, they need to be up here. But because we've got these, what I'll be able to do, I think, actually, is I'm probably going to just trim the ends off through the hole, stick some wire, wrap it around, solder it, and have some four wires and feed the wires through. That's probably going to be the uh, easiest way. But yeah, this was uh, a nightmare to get on. Uh, it's put some sheer force, and I think it's gone on. It's a bit crooked there, but yeah, it will bend out a little bit. You can see I stabbed myself in the process. So a bit of on knee soldering here. Uh, you can see I've uh, wrapped the wire around the pin, bent the pin over. It's just had some solder there, trying mm. not to solder myself. Quite a, a large amount. There we go. And then the final thing is trying to get it straight. And the way to do that is to heat it. Just pull it the orientation you want. Anyway, that's two down. And you can see it's kind of in the profile here. Uh, that one needs to bend in that way a little bit. 
Many to heat and bend it. But yeah, it's a bit bodgy. You could use some heat shrink on these as well if you wanted. But they ain't going anywhere, so I honestly do not see a problem doing this. There's nothing for them to show on. There's nothing for them to show on there. Yeah, that'll be fine. Right, there we go. So yeah, a bit bodgy. This is just a wee bit warped there. I think it just needs just a wee bend like that. Maybe there as well. What I may need to do is just bend these. And obviously the wire strands just need on some of these here just twisting. I'll tell you what I may do is do actually just to stop the wires fraying is twist these on the end here and just get the smallest amount of solder just to secure them so that they don't fray when they go through the hole. Yeah, just tin the ends just ever so slightly there to stop them from fraying. But yeah, some micro adjustment is going to be needed here to get these things aligned just right. Now because the uh, legs are uh, flexible still, you know, the weather soldered on to, that shouldn't be too hard, I don't think. Like this one, is that supposed to be more over this way? I'm just trying to judge this, yeah. The, that one there is more on the inside, isn't it? So the hard part was getting these first contacts in. You've got to push the switch in in order to get those in. And then you can see now from this side, I am uh, hopefully going to be able to just micro adjust these. I need to start with the ones at the back, really. Uh, I'm not sure I can get anything right in there. Obviously make sure you've got no blooming power. Yeah, that one's aligned. This one here, um, I'm not sure about. These two, well, that one's going to go there, that one's going to go there, it's almost going in. Yeah, that one is in position at the back there, it's this one. This one here just needs to go into that hole, I think. I wish I could see what I was doing a bit. Clear it, oh, there we go, it's gone in. That's it. So that is not going to be as secure, as structurally secure as an original one, because it's only going to be really sort of poor support up here sturdily. You know, and obviously you need to inspect around here, I'll do that on that side there because there's a resistor. Just to make sure that there's nothing that could short anywhere. The only thing I can do is obviously once I've soldered from uh, the underside here and got it in position, I could just add a little bit more solder to these points here. And as I say, I could have had some heat shrink around those things. Let's just test it for operation. Yeah, it's jamming looks so I need to just adjust that a little bit. If this metal piece is not fitting quite as low down as it should so I've just trimmed off uh, a little uh, bracket there you know a little support I could just file that little burr off now but I'm going to do the same on that side and then it should just fit just a tiny 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 bit lower which should mean that it latches uh, you know on and off and doesn't catch on the edge there um, maybe easier to file this little bit down here rather than try and cut but I think we can cut Yeah, there you go, you can see that's a lot flatter. I will just get the file on here just to file these little bits just a little bit further. And then it should, should be right. Yeah, hopefully you can see that's, that's going to be fine. It does give me an opportunity to show you this bit again. The uh, painful bit. Get it in there, get it to the cap. Yeah, so I get the cap on it. Push it in, try and push it forward. There we go, that's it. Right, that's right now. Still catching just a little bit. So just to show you what the problem is, it's, it's this plastic here. It's just catching on the top, see, a little bit. So, yeah, let me just try and press down more. I don't know. That's it. I think that's going to be fine. I might just get a little bit of molly coat on that. So, test it out for operation before you commit to solder everything up.
Now I will test it before we assemble it. The other thing I want to do is just adjust the screen voltage on this actually. It's a bit, just a tiny bit high. When you've got green screen mode on, you can see the uh, flyback lines. Unless there's a fault there, I don't think so though. I think I've just uh, adjusted it too high. Right, let's make sure it's uh, off. And it is. The main's laid in. Making sure there's nothing to short, like in the SD mount, that would be a bad thing with something like that. And let's switch it on, uh, for power light at the front. Hey, we've got power. So the red one is the one on the side. Yeah, so obviously reassembly is the reverse of disassembly, so I'll just fast forward through this. That's the one on. There we go. There may be a fault with this because you know what? That flyback thing, look. If I switch into green screen there, you saw it was like over there. Uh, you can see the lines. So I don't know. Don't know why it does that on green screen. And you can see them there then. That's strange, isn't it? Yeah, anyway, let me know in the comments down below. Gumby F99 there. Looking great. So start. Can't beat that scan line goodness. It probably needs a tiny bit more brightness actually. I'm playing it on the TF4060 uh, here. Sweet! Looks great. You do get quite a small display on this game. I never noticed that when I was playing it on the uh, Philips TV there. Oh, so hard to get the power ups on this. Let's just power cycle it. I saw the scan lines there, so you know what? Maybe I've got the uh, screen. Yeah, there you go. Lines there. Maybe I've got it set too high still. I did just uh, adjust it. On the back of the transformer, there, there's two potentiometers. Use uh, an isolated handle screwdriver when you do that, when you adjust those. And the line up the transformer, all that is, I think it was the top one's focus, I think the bottom one's screen. Um, yeah, interlaced is terrible on the 24S, but uh, I mean, look at that, that's gorgeous. It looks wonderful. It's amazing how good the CRT is, actually. You never know, at some point I might upgrade to, a, I don't know, a PVM or a BVM or something. There's some room for a small one here, maybe. Oh, yeah, I changed the gear, so that's all in. Sweet. It's bizarre, even though this is like an analog display, you'd expect it to be uh, expected. Can't sorry, expect properly. You'd expect it to be um, blurry. It's not. It's like super sharp, but just a wee bit blurry. It's a hard thing to explain. And I think it's just the scan lines make everything like more naturally rounded and smoother, without uh, you know the artificial sort of blurriness you get on the upscaling. So switch it off, yeah only a short video, if you'd like to support the channel please do the coffee and patreon links down below, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.